this is a game by Mikhail Tal, uh, played uh, with the white pieces against Yuri Chikavani, a less known player, in 1968. The game shows uh, a nice attack in the position with the isolated queen pawn. Um, Tal was playing with the white pieces, so he started with c4, which actually ends up um, transposing in a position which can arrive, which one can arrive at from the Karakan, the pan of attack, Queen's Gambit de declined, and just a variety of openings. Um, and especially prone to transpositions is this position. Um, here um, we have a typical example of the isolated queen pawn on d4, and it, it provides white with some um, with some extra space, extra ability to um, attack against the king side because his bishop is quite actively placed on d3, and you know his other pieces may be able to swing over to the king side and you know get the attack going there, and. Um, Black's counter chances are related to the attack against this d4 pawn, and sometimes the attack happens, you know, late in the end game. Sometimes it happens, you know, two or three moves down the road. It, it sort of depends on um, how things go. And I mean, Black should try to combine the idea of pressuring d4 uh, with the idea of trying to simplify uh, the position as much as possible. And the fundamental problem now is that he has to develop uh, the bishop. If he goes b6 immediately, then um, white can. Uh, he goes b6 now, then white can chop on d5, and this would be very uncomfortable because then, well, the bishop uh, is looking at. Uh, uh, h7, but it's also pinning this uh, this knight ag along the diagonal, and b6 really weakens the knight. So say after queen retreats, I mean uh, queen c2 is going to win the pawn because black can defend on h7 and uh, c6 at the same time. So the problem is that white can take on d5, um, and to avoid this, black first prepares b6 by playing knight to f6. That's the idea behind knight f6. Not a very logical move, but um, it has some good reasons behind it. Um, and I mean, the other reason is also that black attacks e4 now more directly. White uh, now tries to set up the battery against h7, so he prepares bishop to c2 and queen to d3 by playing a3 first. Black finally gets to get his... Uh, Bishop opened up, so he plays b6, and after bishop to c2, um, white wants to play queen to d3, so black could carry on with uh, bishop to b7, putting the bishop on the long diagonal, but here he tries to kind of disrupt white's plans, and he first plays bishop to a6. This is a reasonable idea. Um, it's it's really gonna be a bit more awkward for white now to set up the attack against h7, which is his main idea for the time being. Um, so after bishop g5, um, rook c8, he really has to kind of go around in awkward ways to set up this battery. He's gonna play rook to d1 probably, and then bishop to b1, and then something like queen to c2, really awkward way to set up this uh, attack against h7, but still, it, it's a good plan. And here, um, um, black probably should play something like um, knight to a5, and then trying to put this knight on c4. He, he instead played uh, queen to d6, and this is not a very good square for the queen, as it turns out. And we'll see why. Uh, and one reason is that it will be falling into different um, attacks from white, in particular after bishop to f4. So rook a to d1, uh, just so that when the bishop goes to b1, the rook doesn't get stuck on a1. And this is really important also to protect um, the pawn on d4. So white 
White wants to attack on the king side, but he really has to go from the center and make sure that the center is uh, well supported. Now black puts the increased pressure on d4 by playing rook f to d8. Um, that's sort of his idea behind the queen to d6. But it turns out that the pressure against d4 isn't really strong enough and white's uh, threats come at first. So bishop to b1, preparing queen c2, um, queen to b8, maybe not the best move, because it turns out that already here, after queen c2, threatening to take, and then to take on h7, well, black has to play g6, but that pawn here is a bit vulnerable, it's a bit vulnerable in particular because uh, all these pawns in the light squares are becoming kind of flaky. And this is the this is what Bronstein described as the weakness of the dark squares. The weakness of dark squares is that the opponent comes and attacks you putting his pieces on dark squares and then the pawns which are on the light squares are actually difficult to defend. And we'll see how these pawns these pawns crumble in this in this game. So Tal naturally that his idea now that his idea of, of this attack along this diagonal doesn't work, the bishop has done his deed, it now transfers to the a2 g8 diagonal. And here it's really difficult for black to defend. He's actually um, struggling. He's really struggling. For example, he can't play something like this to block the diagonal because that would uh, drop the piece um, after bishop takes d5. So knight d5, bishop takes, and, and there's no convenient way to recapture because of the pressure against e7. So uh, the best the best way was probably to just play something cautious like queen to b7, just defending e7. Instead, uh, black just kind of fell apart here. He tried to distract the try to distract the, um, the bishop from his uh, job by playing h6, but it turned out that Tal doesn't even have to take this. He could have taken on h6, but it turns out he doesn't even have to do this. Instead he just crashed in through with bishop to e6 and now everything's falling apart because there is no good way to recapture. And since he can't recapture the bishop, I mean, if he recaptures then queen comes and um, white regains the piece, probably a mating attack. So, since he can't capture, uh, he has to leave that bishop there, but that also means that the queen is still coming to um, g6. And he also can't just let things be, well, because then for one thing, white could simply take on c8 and carry on with the attack. So instead he played h takes g5, but that just uh, allows Tal to bring like three or four pieces against the black king. So he took on g6 first, king h8, uh, now he took on, uh, well, he gave a check first so that the queen doesn't hang, and after king uh, g8, he took on g5. And now just it's impossible to defend all this complex of squares f7, g8, h7, uh, g7, everything just hangs and, and white will probably bring more pieces into the attack. So this is a much uh, more simple game from Tal than you'd usually see. His attack here is more uh, like very direct, very direct. Uh, his opponent was uh, a less strong player and he just got crushed by this very straightforward attack. So he tried to protect f7 with um, rook f8 but uh, Tal played um, rook to e4, and that just ended the game. Because, uh, so black resigned here because um, there's no way to stop rook coming to h4, and if he takes, and if he takes the rook, the mate follows. So, because of this, uh, black uh, admitted that he can't defend a single king against um, four of white pieces and he resigned. So a very nice attacking game uh, from Tal. Also illustrates typical ideas in this type of position with isolated pawn on d4.